In this screencast, we are going to look at the factors market. We are going to look at the graph for land, and we're also going to look at a graph for capital. While we're looking at the graph for land, we're going to understand that demand determines the price for land, and we're going to look at the supply and demand of loanable funds and look at how that determines the price for capital. The payment for land is rent, and as you can see in this graph here, you have a perfectly inelastic supply curve. By now you should understand that the marginal revenue product of a resource determines the demand for that resource. This understanding can be applied to the demand for land and capital. It will be on the supply side of the land market that you will encounter whatever difficulties there are. The supply of land is unique because it is perfectly inelastic. Changes in rent do not change the quantity of land that will be supplied. Given the quantity of land available, demand is the sole determinant of economic rent. Of course, land varies in productivity and be, can be used for different purposes, but these are merely the factors that explain why the rent on all land is not the same. When we're talking about land, there's two terms that you need to understand. One is economic rent and the other one is surplus payment. Economic rent is the price paid for the use of land or natural resources whose supply is perfectly inelastic. The supply of land is perfectly inelastic because it is, because it is virtually fixed in the quantity available. Supply has no influence in determining economic rent. The demand for land is the active determinant of economic rent. As demand increases or decreases, economic rent will increase or decrease given the perfectly inelastic supply of land. So, so what we say with this is that economic rent serves no incentive, fu incentive function given the fixed supply of land. It's not necessary to increase economic rent to bring forth more quantity, as is the case with other natural resources. Economists therefore consider economic rent a surplus payment. When you think of the, the term surplus, think of it as a word as saying unnecessary. We're going to show that land is a surplus payment in the graph here. So what we're going to do is look at what happens to the price and the quantity of land as we increase our demand for land. With an increase in the demand for land, you have a rightward shift of the demand curve. And what you can see here is that the price goes up for the land. However, the quantity remains the same. Change in land rent perform no incentive function for the economy because they bring forth no more supply of land. Land rents are unnecessary surplus payments for the economy. These gifts of nature are not something that somebody creates, but rather they're given to them. Interest is the price paid for the use of money. Interest is stated as a percentage. Money is not an economic resource because it is not productive. When you think of our four factors of production, land, labor, capital, and entrepreneurability, money is not one of the four factors of production. People borrow money at an interest rate and use it to buy capital goods. These capital goods are economic resources that can be used to produce other goods and services. The loanable funds theory of interest describes how the interest rate is determined by the demand and supply of loanable funds. The intersection of the, of the demand for and supply of loanable funds determines the equilibrium interest rate and the quantity of funds loaned. Notice here that interest rate is on the vertical axis and it's with an R. That is how you show interest rate. The demand for loanable funds typically comes from businesses for investment in capital goods. So when we look at the demand for loanable funds, we see that there's an inverse relationship between the interest rate and the quantity of loanable funds demanded. Meaning that when the interest rate goes down, the quantity of loanable funds demanded will increase because it becomes cheaper to be able to take out a loan. And so when you look here at this intersection of the supply of loanable funds with the demand of loanable funds, you can see that this is where the interest rate is created and then also the quantity. But let's say that this interest rate is considered to be low, like we currently have going on in the economy.
Well, as a result then, you would have an increase in the demand for loanable funds from the businesses because they would want to increase their capital to be able to expand or grow their business. And as a result then, you would have an increase in the interest rate and an increase in the quantity of loanable funds. The supply of loanable funds is generally provided by households through savings. So again, the demand comes from businesses, the supply comes from the households through their savings. And when we look at the relationship going on with the supply of loanable funds, there is a positive relationship between the interest rate and the quantity of loanable funds supplied, meaning that the supply curve then you have an increase in the supply of loanable funds as the interest rate goes up. Because if I supply my loanable funds, that means then the bank is going to pay me in a higher interest rate for this loaning that I'm giving to the bank. The supply curve, if you look at that graph, you'll notice is relatively inelastic. And thus, it's not that responsive to um, a change in the interest rate as it would be if it was more elastic. 